Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Data Analysis with Dr. Veronica. In this video, we will look at the Microsoft Excel Choose Rows and Choose Calls functions. We will understand the Choose Rows and Choose Calls function syntax. We will learn to use the Choose Rows and Choose Calls functions with examples. We will see how to nest the Choose Rows function with the VStack function, and we will see how to use the choose rows function with the text split function. This video is going to be interesting. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel if this is the first time you're stopping by my YouTube channel and you are yet to subscribe. For returning subscribers, thank you for coming back. When you have an array of data that is super huge and you want to concern yourself with only certain data in certain columns or certain rows. So for example, the data that I need is only the dates and the accounts code and the budget line code, for example. How do I extract these specific columns from this array of data that I have? If you need to extract only row number four and row number eight and say row number 14 for specific reasons, don't know how to go about this. Choose rows and the choose calls functions is the function that you need to know to help you extract this data from the entire array of data that you have. So these functions allows you to choose specific rows and specific columns from a wide range of data. Let us get started. The choose rows and the choose calls functions is only available on Microsoft 365 and the Office web versions. So if you have earlier versions of Excel, you will not find the choose rows and the choose calls function embedded in your Excel. We will start with choose calls. So in this example, like I mentioned earlier, I want to extract only column A, column D, and column E. How do I do this? I just enter the equal to sign and type choose calls, open the brackets, and then I have this syntax. So the syntax for the choose calls and the choose rows functions are the same. The array, the number one syntax here that says array is a compulsory requirement, which basically is the array of the entire data that you are looking at to select the specific columns from. The same with the choose rows. The array is the entire range of data that you're looking to extract the specific rows from. So this is what the array syntax means. So this is my entire array of data and I have just selected it like this. I will put the comma separator to go to the next argument. The next argument is asking me column number one. So which number of column do I want to extract from this entire array that I have selected? You have the liberty to select any number that you wish. It is also important to note that from your array of selection, the columns have automatically been numbered, beginning from the first column in the array. So column A is number one, column B is number two, column C is number three, column D is four, and column E is five, considering the array that has been selected. I want the date column, which is, co which is in column A, which is number one. So I put one, I put the comma separator. The next column that I am interested in is column D, which is number four. I put four, I put the comma separator, and the next column that I am interested in is column E, which is number five. I put five and this is all that I need. I close the brackets and I hit the enter button on my keyboard. This is the result that has been returned for me. We can see that the date column is giving us serial numbers instead of the date format. All you need to do is to change the format of this column in the numbers group that is in the home tab. So after highlighting the column or the data in the column, I come here, I click on the drop down, and I select short date. We can see that the format of the data has changed. This is how the choose calls function works. This can apply to data that is as huge as possible. And I am going to delve into the choose rows function. The choose rows function works exactly like the choose calls function. I put equal to and I type choose rows, open the bracket, 
The array requirement is compulsory and it is asking for the entire range of data, which I have just selected here. I put the comma separator. The next argument is the row number. The same with the column. I need to provide the row number. And the row number, of course, is relating to the array of data selected. In this case, I need row number four, row number 10. So I will just select random numbers, row number four. I put four, put the comma separator, type 10, put the comma separator, put 12, put the comma separator and put number 13. I will close the bracket and I press the enter button on my keyboard. This is my returned value. I will change the format of the date column so that I can have the dates showing appropriately. This is how the choose calls function and the choose rows function work in its basic form. Another thing to note is that you can use negative numbers. In the examples that we have just seen, we used only positive numbers to represent the column and the rows that I am looking for. But of course, we can use negative numbers. So let us do choose rows and I will select the entire array of data. I put the comma separator. In this case, I want to use negative numbers. So what negative numbers does, it takes the choose rows function to look at the array from the end of the data. The negative values takes the choose rows or choose calls function to look at the end of the data. In the case of choose rows, it takes you to the last rows. So it looks at from the last rows upwards. When you use negative numbers for choose calls, you're looking at the last column inwards. So we are going to do this right away. The last row in the array of data that I have is minus one. So I'm just going to put minus one and close the bracket and we see what comes up for us. So we can see what feeding our account, which is a description. This is the last row. So minus one tells you go to Choose the first row from the last. Choose the first row from the last. This is minus one. And I am going to add minus two here, which is the second row from the end of the rows in the array. I put the comma separator and this is what I have. So minus one and minus two. Of course, minus one comes first, which is the last row in the array. And the second to the last row in the array comes next. So you can use negative values in your column number or your row numbers, and you can also use positive values. For rows, the positive values looks at the entire array from the top, while the negative values looks at the array from the last row. Let us apply the negative values to the choose calls function and see what we get. So this is another example. I will put here choose calls, open the brackets. I select my entire array, which is from here to here, columns A to E. I put the comma separator. And in this case, the column number one, I need the last column in the array. So I am going to put minus one. And the next is I need the third to the last column in the array. So I will put minus three and I will close the bracket. And notice C, this is what we have. We can see first the last column in the array that was selected, which is budget line code, and the third to the last column in the array selected, which is the amount column. So we have been able to establish with examples that you can use both positive numbers and negative numbers in your row number and column numbers when using the choose calls and the choose rows function. The practice file for this video is in the description box. When you open the description section, you will see a link to download the practice file. The best way to learn Microsoft Excel is to do it, is to learn by doing. So please download the practice file so that you can practice as you watch this video to get the full value of the video. The next example that we are going to look at is how we can fix row numbers or column numbers and use the values fixed in those cells to determine the rows or the columns that we want. 
it. We are going to see what I, what I mean in the next example. So I have these row numbers already fixed. Row number one, row number four, row number three. Of course, I can change this to row number seven. As the case may be, depends on what you want. Fixing the row numbers. And let us apply the choose rows function based on the predefined values that have been fixed in cells. So I'm going to write here, choose rows, open the bracket. In this case, this is my entire array. I put the comma separator, row number one, row number two, row number three. So what I will do here is I will select these selection of row numbers that have been fixed. I will close the bracket and hit the enter button on my keyboard. From this range of data, the array of data that I have, the choose rows function has been able to look for row number one, row number four, and row number seven. And let us see if this is correct. This is row number one. This is row number seven, which is what we have here. This is row number four, which is what we have here. This is row number seven, which is exactly what we have here. The advantage of putting the numbers of the rows or the columns in cells like this is to allow you the flexibility of changing the values without changing the formula itself. So let us say we have changed our mind and then we need say row number 10. I will just come here and put 10 and I will first zoom this so that we can see how it works. I will put 10 here and press the enter button on my keyboard. We can see that this particular value has changed automatically. So I would do this again, change this to say 13 and let us observe what happens. This has changed automatically. This is the advantage that this provides. It enables you to change the values that you're looking for without necessarily changing the formula itself, but you can change from your row selection or the column selection that you have put in here. The next example that we are looking at is this. Let us imagine that we have a scenario where we need to first of all merge these two array of data that we have on different sheets because like you can see from the sheet name, the first one is August, the second one is July. And let us say that we want to choose different rows that are on these two different sheets. We need to choose say row number one, two, three here. And then on the July sheet, we need to select the last two rows. How do we go about this? Using the choose rows, function. We can go about this by nesting the choose rows function with the vstack function. I have a video on vstack and hstack, of course, and the video is very comprehensive. If you do not know how to use the vstack function, the link to that video is in the description. Please do well to click on the link and watch the video on how to use vstack extensive video with lots of examples, really interesting video. So we will see how to nest the vstack function with the choose rows function to select specific rows from different Excel sheets. So the first thing we will do here is to use the vstack function. We select the first array, we select the second array, and I close the vstack function. I hit the enter button on my keyboard and this is what the vstack function has produced for me. But this is not what I need. What I need is only selected rows in the stacked array of data. So I will nest the vstack function with the choose rows function. Choose rows, open the bracket. The V stack is my array. So I put the comma separator and I choose the row number. So row number one would be one, two, three, which is going to give me the first three rows in the first array. And I will go over to doing minus one, minus two, to get the last two rows in the second array. I will close the bracket and I press the enter button on my keyboard. This is my output. So what we can see here is the first three rows in the first array right here. And 
the last two rows in the second array like this. I will change the format of these cells to short date and our data is nicely arranged. This is so easy peasy. The last example we will see in this video is how to nest the choose rows function with the text split function. I also have a video on text split, really comprehensive video with lots of examples. The link to that video is also in the description box. Please watch the video to understand how to use text split. And one of the things that I do is I attach the practice file to every video that I upload to enable the viewers to enable you to learn as you watch the video. Please watch the text split video to see how to use text split. The text split function basically divides, it split your text using certain delimiters that is specified for it. In this case, I want to return row number one, three, four, seven, and nine, but the row numbers are in one cell, unlike the previous example where, we, where the row numbers were in different cells. So it is going to be impossible. Let us try, I select the array here, and I select the rows to return. And let us see what happens. We get a value error because these entry in this cell is being recognized as a value, as a text, not as a number. The choose rows and the choose calls function works with numbers. So in this case, what do we do? First, we need to split these row numbers. We need to split it into different cells. And what we need to use is the text split function. I choose the text that I want to split. The column delimiter, of course, is the comma separator, and I close the bracket. And this is the output that I have. Another thing to note is that the text split function, just like the name implies text, it splits and then the output is represented as text, not as values. So to convert these outputs to values or to convert it to an array of numbers, we are just going to multiply this by one and hit the enter button on our keyboard. So this has been converted to values that the choose rows function can recognize. So I will put here choose rows. I select my entire array. I put the comma separator. The exact function that we had here is what we are going to transfer to this. So I put text split, open the bracket, select this. My delimiter is the comma separator. I close the bracket, I multiply by one, I close the bracket and let's see the outcome. So this has returned rows number one, three, four, seven and nine. And let us double check row number one, row number three, four, seven and nine nine, which is exactly the same information that we have here. I will change this format to a date format like this. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and let me know in the comment section what you think about this video. Also give this video a thumbs up. What we have been able to do in this video is to explain the choose rows and the choose calls functions. And we have also seen how to use choose rows and choose calls functions with examples. We also have seen how to nest the choose rows function with the vstack function. And we have learned to use the choose rows function with the text split function. Please give me a thumbs up. Let me know in the comment section if you were successful to use the choose rows and the choose calls functions. And let me know also which other ways you are able to apply the choose rows and the choose calls function. See you in the next video.